Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day for Christmas Eve 2022, December 24th, as you all know. Do pray this finds you well. The weather was a little bit better today. It's supposed to be even better tomorrow and then warm up throughout the week. Do hope you had time to celebrate with your brothers and sisters in church today. And if not, uh, maybe watch this online tomorrow, 9 o'clock. Had two wonderful services, the afternoon service, and then we just finished not long ago the candlelight service, which was uh, just a joy, just a joy to hear. Man, people at Emmanuel can sing. Man, it's just nice to sit up at the front of the church and yeah, I sing too, but it's just to hear all those voices. And there are times where I can't be singing because of something I'm doing, and to hear them all singing and singing so well. And, you know, it's just a beautiful night because it's just these beautiful, beloved Christmas hymns. I'll sing one of them in a few minutes. So anyway, without further ado, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Tonight we turn to Revelation chapter 12, and we read it in its entirety. And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and with the moon under her feet and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pains and the agony of giving birth. And another sign, another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great dragon with seven heads and ten horns on its head, seven diadems, its tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth so that when she bore her children, he might devour it. She gave birth to a male child, one who was to rule all the nations with the rod of iron. But her child was caught up to God and to his throne, and the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared by God, in which she is to be nourished for 1,260 days. Now a war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fighting back. But he was defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven, and the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. For they loved not their lives even unto death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth and sea, the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. And when the dragon saw that he had been thrown down to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of the great eagle, so that she might fly from the serpent into the wilderness, to the place where she was to be nourished for a time and times and a half time. The serpent poured water like a river out of his mouth after the woman to sweep her away with a flood. But the earth came to help to the help of the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed the river that the dragon had poured from his mouth. Then the dragon became furious with the woman and went off to make war on the rest of her offspring, on those who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. And he stood on the sand of the sea. And that is the word of the Lord. Now, this is a just a wonderful chapter to read on this night, Christmas Eve, because we hear how this female child, and this is actually the church, the, the, this, this female, this, this woman, this is the church. And, and we use the language of womanhood to speak about our mother, the church, how she gives birth to, to uh, Christians being born again within her how we are nourished by her, we, we, are, you know, we feed at her breast, meaning that the Word of God and the Holy Supper were nourished and nurtured. And this is, uh, I, I assume Lutherans are used to hearing that. I, you know, since I didn't grow up Lutheran, I know this was common language within the church, in the Roman Catholic Church that I grew up in. I know it's not uncommon to Lutheranism. I mean, I, you certainly read Luther and others, and they, they talk this way all the time. 
I don't know if it's how common it is in American Lutheranism, but uh, it is in my church, and uh, a number of the churches and the other pastors I know will speak this way, based on not just this, but in particular Revelation chapter 12. So think about the church giving birth to this child, which is Christ, all right, the that comes from, the Christ comes from God's people. He's not an outsider that sort of walks in and says, yeah, he got it all wrong until I came along. He he comes from, you know, the line of Abraham, from the church, from God's people. We are the children of Abraham because of our baptism. So it is interesting to think of the Savior, you know, being born, being, being birthed by the church. Now, it's interesting here, uh, in this in this chapter too, because you, it kind of cycles back three times on itself. I, remember, Revelation is not you know, strictly linear; it, 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 it's cyclical. And you know, we hear about this woman giving birth to the child, and how the child is caught up to heaven, and, and this and this uh, great dragon. And then we hear it's almost a narrative. You know, it, it, about halfway or about the the second third of the chapter. Let's say it like that about Michael and uh, this war in heaven, Michael fighting against the dragon and the dragon. So we see what's actually happening. And we see how the dragon comes to war with the woman and her children. And we'll talk about that. There, there's one particular child, that's the Christ, but then there's the children that the church bores, which is you and me, who are followers of Christ. And we hear that at the end, what, what, you know, what makes you hated by Satan is you follow Christ. One of the things we remember on this day is that Satan is defeated. This is a beautiful. This is beautiful language here. And it's it's wonderful that it's just such a, just a simple narrative. So a war rose in heaven. Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. Those are all the demonic forces, the fallen angels. But he was defeated. All right. And in case we're not clear who this dragon is, we're told. Um, he was defeated and there was no longer any place for them in heaven and the great dragon was thrown down. That ancient serpent, you can think of Genesis, who is called the devil and Satan. He's the father of lies, the deceiver, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth and, uh, and his angels were thrown down with him. And then we hear this loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of Christ have come. The accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before God. And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, for they love not their lives even unto death. So the victory over Satan isn't won by weapons. It's won by Christ, by his blood. Because what can Satan accuse you of? His greatest tool, that it, 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 and then we talked about this, I just sort of passing in the sermon tonight, he talked about this. But he loves to accuse you. And the nice thing is, in Christ you get to say, Amen. Which means this is true. You're right. You know, he's not going to be the father of lies when he's accusing you. It's easy to dismiss that. He's going to be calling up those old memories, those things you wish no one would ever mention. We all have them. All right. We all have things that we've done. We're like, man, I hope no one, you know, gosh, you know, I, I don't want that, you know, shouted from the rooftops. And how is he defeated? Not by you being able to art, out, out argue Satan or to arm wrestle him or, or which is so popular in, in uh, Sort of like quasi-Christian literature. Uh, you know, I think of the great movie Crossroads. That there's a real mixing of religions there: Christianity and 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 sort of voodoo there. Um, but you know, it, it, it culminates with uh, somebody. Uh, oh, you know, I think about the great uh, you know Charlie Daniels song when I was growing up. The uh, uh, is it the devil? The devil went down to Georgia. You know, where somebody's got a battle against Satan and and then prove that they're better at him or something, and, and then he he is defeated. That's not what this says. You you know, Satan is defeated, and you are victorious in the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. Because, you know, it's not like Satan, you know, was, I mean, he will be ultimately, you know, destroyed and thrown uh, into, I mean, there's an end coming for him. You know, but he, he the real victory is already in Christ, because when he can accuse you, and you can say, yeah, well, so what? Christ knows and he died for that. And no, no matter what Satan says to you, you can say, well, Christ knows and he died for that. Because that's true, right? You cover, you, you, We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Now, Satan is cast on her and he is ticked off. He is like that kid you played some game with when you were 12 years old or probably a little bit younger. 
and you were just creaming them. And what did they do? You know, they, they took the board and threw it. You know, they were sore losers. That's Satan. You know, and so we saw the, so we, we were given this warning. And then we see the dragon who's thrown on the earth. He pursues the woman. That's the church um, who had given birth to the male child. But she is protected. You know, Jesus says the, the, the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. And tonight, and we'll hear this tomorrow uh, during the, uh, the gospel reading from John, John chapter 1, the prologue. We'll hear that uh, you know, the light has come, the darkness, uh, the darkness will not overcome it. Uh, it, it you know, the light is ultimate victorious and it can't be shut out. It can't be shut off. And the gates of hell will not prevail. The, the, the children of that light, the church, so uh, uh, we hear um, how he goes after us, the church. But remember, it's in Christ that you are victorious. This is a beautiful chapter, again, to read on this night. Because we are reminded that the incarnation, Christ coming into the flesh, to he, he takes our sin, he carries it with him to the cross, and it's put to death in him on the cross. Your sin is put to death in him. When your sin is dead, you know, so as you stand before God, you're sinless because you are covered with Christ. It's been put to death in Christ, not because you're actually sinless. When God sees you, he sees the blood, the perfect holy blood of his son, Jesus Christ. He sees you covered in that blood, and you are now considered holy because of Christ. You're where Christ's holiness. So no matter what, you know, your history shows and whatever you struggle with we all struggle with sin remember this that it is by the blood of the lamb that we overcome there's so much i could say about this short chapter uh it's picking some of the languages apart and the numbers and stuff like that but just remember you know we're, we're, we're taking the high view which i think is probably good in the long run and it keeps coming back to what jesus imagine that in his victory Let's confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Believe in God, the Father, Almighty Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, bless your church throughout the world. Keep her safe from the attacks of Satan. Keep us faithful proclaiming your saving work, Jesus Christ, and help us cling to his promises, the promises that you have made to us in Christ alone, knowing that by this alone are we saved. Heavenly Father, we do ask you to be with the churches who have strayed from proclaiming your truth, that they would be called back and repent of their, of their false teaching. And we do pray that you would stop the mouse up of those who, who peddle in false doctrine, and try to uh, thwart um, the work of your church throughout the world. Heavenly Father, in these dark and latter days, strengthen us by your promises, the promises that uh, the gates of hell will not prevail against us, that you are with us always to the end of the very age of ages. We ask you to be with all who are sick and crying out to you for healing. Place your hand upon them. Be with those who are traveling. Grant them safe travel. Protect those who are working right now to keep us safe. Allow them to return um, home at the end of their duties intact to those whom they love. Heavenly Father, again, we give you thanks for the blessed gift of our Lord Jesus Christ. All this we ask and thank you for in that precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins, where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. Bid your hands, I commend myself, my body, and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I'm going to sing, O Little Town of Bethlehem. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above. While mortals sleep, the angels keep their watch of wandering love. O morning stars together proclaim the holy birth, and praises sing to God the King, and peace to all the earth. How silently, how silently, the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. No ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. O come to us, Abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. That's hymn 361, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Merry Christmas, my brothers and sisters. Nine o'clock tomorrow morning, the feast and the nativity. But you have a pleasant rest. By God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.